It is in that location, for those of you who have not been there, and uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, the ape, the great ape habitats are those being pointed at. They are found, majority are found in the western part of the country, uh, in the national parks and wildlife reserves. But there are some groups of uh, chimpanzees that find themselves uh, in private forest patches in the western part of the country, but these are not significant populations. Uh, Uganda is very small uh, compared to other big countries. 84% uh, of it is land and 15% is water. And 10% uh, of this is gazetted as wildlife conservation areas, 24 as forest reserves, and 13 are wetlands. Uh, in terms of biological diversity, given its small size, Uganda is highly diverse in terms of species, with 18,783 so far recorded species. And as science grows, uh, more and more species will certainly be uh, discovered. Yeah, the great apes found in Uganda are the mountain gorillas, uh, the chimpanzees, and of course ourselves. Uh, so it is actually a problem when I am discussing the linkage. It is poverty in terms of who, because these other apes can also claim uh, that it should be the other way around. It can be the reverse. So, but for purposes of this presentation, I will consider the, the mountain gorillas and the chimpanzees as the great apes. And then, selfishly, I will consider the poverty of, the, of, of mankind. That is how selfish man is, and we must uh, learn to proceed as such. The context in which I'm using uh, uh, the word apes has been given there. I will be particularly referring to the mountain gorillas and chimpanzees, because these are the apes uh, which are found in Uganda, uh, with the exception of uh, human beings. And towards my, I'm referring to activities, services, and industries that collectively deliver travel experience. Uh, you must have realized from the previous speaker that poverty has no conventional definition, and indeed there is none. And so I will limit my expressions uh, to mean inability to acquire the basic goods and services necessary for survival with dignity. That will be the, concept, the context in which I will be using the word poverty. Uh, I will start with opportunities. Later on, I go to uh, limitations, and then I end up with uh, lessons. So opportunities, uh, the single biggest opportunity that we must talk about when we talk about uh, great ape conservation and the tourism is the ecological services that come with the great ape conservation. Uh, you find that the habitats for great apes are also, they happen to be uh, rainforests, for the case of gorillas, for example, and chimpanzees in Ibuindi. This is an impenetrable forest that is a catchment area for the surrounding communities. So it provides uh, the water, uh, pollination, and very many other ecological services, which are very critical for the survival of the agricultural lands that neighbor these habitats. So in a way, if you promote great ape tourism, the benefits will make it possible to conserve this habitat, and in turn, this habitat will provide uh, uh, the ecological services to the people, and they will increase the natural capital uh, of the people, which is uh, poverty reduction. Because if we are looking at uh, the poverty dimension, the, the natural capital is a very, very big component of poverty. If you give people money without these ecological services, there would be no survival. Uh, the other opportunity is direct income uh, to government. Uh, gorilla tracking generates direct uh, money to government. And uh, chimpanzee tracking also 
generates uh, money to, 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 to government. As you can see, that it track a mountain gorilla in a day, you will part with 500 US dollars, and a chimp will attract around 150 uh, US dollars. There are some other tourism packages that attract uh, much more money, for example, the habituation experience. All of these uh, provide direct income to government, and government being people, uh, this in turn provides uh, provision of public services, including medical facilities, roads, which are components of poverty, alleviation, education, name it. Uh, it is uh, worth noting that 100% of the direct revenue generated from uh, uh, Great Ape Tourism in Uganda is plowed back into conservation uh, work and is retained at the conservation agency level to provide uh, funds for conservation of wildlife as a whole beyond the great ape tourism. So you can see that great ape, great ape tourism uh, has an opportunity to generate funds that will ensure survival of other wildlife species and habitats beyond the great apes themselves. <coughs> Uh, in direct income to government, uh, in Uganda, tourism is uh, the second largest foreign exchange earner for the country. And as such, great, uh, great ape tourism is a very significant component of tourism as a whole in Uganda. In fact, the mountain gorillas, uh, the mountain gorillas are referred to as the kingpin of Uganda's tourism. So this foreign exchange earnings, of course, uh, is very, very important for the economy. Needless to say uh, that the great ape, great ape tourism uh, provides also indirect income to government in a way of taxes on goods and services in the tourism sector and the general contribution to GDP as uh, a measure of poverty uh, reduction. Employment opportunities, uh, which in turn provide increased household incomes, and of course, uh, thereby reducing poverty. In Uganda, there are over 268,000 uh, enterprises engaged in tourism-related businesses as of uh, last year, with 200 companies registered as tour operators. And uh, in Uganda, if you're a tour operator and you don't have a great app package, most probably you are not a significant tour operator. So great app tourism influences uh, these jobs. Uh, of course, the conservation agencies also provide the employment opportunities. In order to maintain uh, that great ape tourism, you need uh, personnel on the ground. And the Uganda Wildlife Authority alone employs 1,300 uh, permanent staff. This is just one organization. Because you must have people on the ground, you must have uh, tour guides, you must have uh, uh, enforcement officers on the ground, you know. All these things generate uh, income and employment to the local people. Uh, in all 80,000 people, are expected, uh, approximately expected to be employed in the tourism, great ape tourism value chain in Uganda. There are various uh, lodges and camps which also employ people uh, as chefs, you know, and then there is uh, guiding, and uh, of recent there is uh, what we call porters, the people who carry bags for tourists that they climb. You know the terrain where these great apes are found is a little bit uh, challenging, so you need somebody to help carry your bag, and this generates direct uh, household income at the local level, because these are a preserve 
of the local people that live near the protected areas. There is uh, great opportunities uh, in terms of uh, market for locally produced goods and services. Uh, so great ape tourism provides a very big potential to the agriculture sector in the area in terms of uh, the things which the tourists will use uh, at hotel level during transport. And so you can uh, say that uh, great ape tourism is a very, very big market for the locally produced goods, ranging from food, crafts, you know, yeah. among others. There is a revenue sharing program in Uganda, uh, which is statutory. 20% of all gate entries collected from any protected area in Uganda is supposed to go directly to the local people that come from a parish neighboring that protected area. And so the parks in which the apes live generate direct income to the local people in terms of the revenue sharing program. There is also another scheme called the Gorilla Levy, whereby every permit, every Gorilla permit sold, there is a levy that goes to the local people which are neighboring that protected area where the gorillas were tracked from. Currently, each gorilla permit, uh, each gorilla permit sold, five dollars go directly to the gorilla levy, and then when it accumulates, it is disbursed to the local people to support public good projects and uh, livelihood improvement projects at the local uh, level. There is this whole thing of integrated conservation and development projects which are associated with great, great ape conservation. Uh, right from the days of CARE, as far back as 1991, when great ape tourism was being started in Uganda, a lot of uh, integrated conservation and development projects were put in place, and they are still continuing to be in place. You can see a community hospital. Uh, you must have heard about, I heard somebody talk about Glendis Kalema. There is a, a community hospital which was started particularly to offer services uh, to bridge the gap between the great ape health and the community population health. Because these being uh, uh, close relatives, there is a potential for diseases to crisscross and so this was particularly dedicated to that. The, the, the hospital offers services uh, to the former forest dwelling people called the Pijimis. And initially it was meant to serve that, but it has turned into a very, very big uh, hospital that is even far better than uh, government hospitals around. And it has become a very, very, very uh, developed health facility. There are school projects. Uh, you can see this. This is, a, this is a community lodge, which was started as a pilot case study in order to generate direct benefits to the local people. So a seed grant was given to the local people neighboring uh, uh, Bugindi Penetrable National Park. And so they got in the touch with a private partner a, a, a professional business, tourism business manager to help manage the lodge. And everybody who sleeps in that lodge, a percentage of the bed night goes back to the local communities. There is a second one also. This, this one is uh, for, for Bwindo also, Buhoma, Buhoma part. Those of you who have been there, this is in the Nkuringo area, part of Chisoro district. Uh, and this is in another location, but of the same mode also. It is a community managed tourism facility where the tourism uh, benefits go directly into community projects. Uh, in terms of uh, social capital, great ape tourism has potential uh, to empower the marginalized groups. 
These are the former forest dwellers, as you can see, they've been developed into a tourism product called the Batwa trade, uh, the Pijimese trade. So these are trained to showcase their culture to tourists who come uh, to visit great apes. And so in a way they generate income and they are empowered. Uh, security, everywhere where there is great ape tourism, you will realize that there must be security because security is an integral part of tourism. So without great ape tourism, who knows, these would be habitats for rebels as there is in other areas. So this is a very, very, very big uh, uh, poverty reduction impact. Where there is insecurity, you can never fight poverty there. Uh, there are other indirect opportunities which come along with tourism growth, including infrastructure growth, international linkages. There is a lot of uh, ongoing student exchange programs, which students are identified when tourists visit uh, these local sites. And then they link schools uh, in their uh, source countries with the schools at great ape sites. And so uh, there is the knowledge and the technology transfer and the social capital build up, which greatly uh, reduces poverty. Like previous speakers have said, of course, uh, there is no opportunity that comes without limitation, and so they are negative uh, uh, on great ape tourism. It has been already mentioned that there is an even a distribution of opportunities where the elites tend to capture these opportunities, uh, thereby the, the, the poor remaining poor. And then, of course, habituation of these great apes uh, have potential to, inc to, to increase uh, the home ranges of, 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 of great apes, and also the loss of fear of humans can greatly enhance uh, human wildlife conflicts because they will come out of protected areas. There is high community uh, revenue expectations. What seems to come out from uh, revenue sharing, much as it is tangible, but it's not enough. The expectations have been set high. We still see uh, poaching, though not targeting great apes, but of course great apes end up dying as an targeted species. And uh, needless to say that there are direct potential negative impacts from tourism activities, diseases, scabies have been reported in mountain gorillas, stress and behavior change, uh, and change in home ranges, these have been scientifically proven, but intervention measures have been put in place uh, in terms of health monitoring and also following uh, the tourism gorilla rules. Uh, great ape tourism leads to the high cost of living in the sites where tourism uh, takes place, and of course this further impoverishes the local people on site. If a kilogram of meat was selling at 500 or 50 US dollars, say, with great ape tourism it will go to 100 dollars. This will make the poor, the, the people more poor because they can't afford the, the, the life. And of course they will not be, <laughs> they are not going to, 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 to migrate to other areas to run away from that cost of living. So that's a big uh, impact, I think. Uh, you will realize that tourism, of course, brings in more people. So it increases on, on human population in these sites because there will be concentration of activities. And so there will be ecological uh, footprint. Lessons learned. Uh, we've learned from uh, the years we've been having uh, great ape tourism that benefit sharing is an effective tool for positive conservation attitude. This has been uh, studied and there is evidence. We've also learned that collaborative management of protected areas is a highly cost effective conservation tool. However, law enforcement should, should always be blended. It's not enough to say the people are aware and uh, there is a stronger collaborative management effort and therefore that enforcement should be relaxed. No, it should be an integrated kind of approach to managing of these resources. And I can uh, confidently conclude 
uh, that well moderated ecotourism, great ecotourism is an effective conservation tool and a poverty reduction approach only if it is well moderated. I thank you very much for listening to me.